Yes, James Cromwell is probably best known for his Oscar-nominated turn as the humble farmer in the movie Babe. That'll do, pig. That'll do. But beneath the unassuming exterior lies a rebel heart. James's sense of justice is so strong. His father, a theater film and director, was placed on the infamous Hollywood blacklist in the 50s. In the 60s, James himself worked alongside the Black Panthers and later became an outspoken advocate for animal rights, a cause that recently got him arrested. This is not science! This is torture! But James has balanced activism with acting. Roles on groundbreaking TV shows from All in the Family. Thanks a lot, Stretch. Oh, that's okay. I had to walk that way anyway. As the man said when he bought the talcum powder. <laughs> to American Horror Story. There are those whose lives otherwise serve no purpose. And on the big screen, playing princes. In 48 hours, this will all have calmed down. And presidents. I thought the war would have carried us. James is paired with a Canadian treasure, Genevieve Bougeau, in a new film called Still Mine by the wonderful Michael McGowan. It's about a couple fighting to build their final home. And so fitting for James, standing up to the system. We won't move in until we're ready. That's a promise. Okay. James Cromwell! Nice to see you, man. Good. Welcome. Thanks. Good to see you. It's fun. You squeeze my back. <laughs> you know, so the last time I saw you was in Whistler at the Whistler Film Festival, yeah. which is a great festival. Wonderful. And your film, Still Mine, which was still, um, yeah. was playing. Yeah. And then now, since then, you've won a Canadian Screen Award. Yeah, pretty weird. <laughs> Best <laughs> amazing. For his performance in this film, directed by the awesome Michael McGowan. Yeah. So, but you said in your acceptance speech it was the first time you'd ever won anything. Yeah, I've been a bridesmaid many times, actually, but I now know how that feels. Uh, and uh, the thing that was weird was uh, at the academies, you know, they stick a, a camera right in your face because they, the audience evidently enjoys seeing the losers as much as the winners. Yeah. And I thought, uh, I thought, first of all, I resented that because I'm not going to give a performance when I lose. Um, I don't know how you compare apples and oranges, and how, and it's not even apples and oranges. Why make a distinction between four wonderful performances? When I got my Academy Award nomination, they said to me, you know, getting the nomination is the real prize. The award itself is a crapshoot. I mean, it, it's how much money is thrown at it. It's what the industry, how the industry wants to publicize itself. My nomination cost me $60,000 to get of my own money. The studio did not help me at all. My mother made a wonderful film called Awakenings with Bobby De Niro and Robin Williams. And some publicist came up to her and said, that's an Academy Award performance, Ms. Nelson. And it, I think it'll only cost us $25,000. My mother was appalled. It never occurred to her because that's what right. you have to do. I have human bondage. Take a look at this. Oh, it's always the same. If you want a man to be nice to you, you have to be rough and behemoth. If you treat a man honestly, you'll... Philip, there's someone else. Yes. So beautiful. Oh, wow, so wow. And that's really moving to see that. That's incredible. That's when we don't, it's like sometimes we forget that our parents had lives, right? And, oh. are, and are the same as us. Well, I saw, of course, I saw my father's because he continued. Yeah. Even after the blacklisting, uh, he made 57 pictures in Hollywood and, and then he was blacklisted. Yeah. But my mother, uh, after the divorce, was so unsettled by it uh, that she put off acting for a while and then when she did go to audition, she was so nervous, she decided never to do it again. So she didn't have a life, she didn't, which happens to a lot of women. Uh, very unfortunate that- Why do you think that is? Because it's a stupid male-dominated, paternalistic, chauvinistic world, and uh, it's the hardest on the women who should be running the world anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. You see, the, the trick is, Males can't multitask. They can only do one thing at a time. If they try to multitask, they're really dangerous and you gotta watch out for them. So, I mean, it's what we do. We're dreamers. Yeah. Basically, we're dreamers. And women are the 
people in the world that get things done. Hey, but look, you're not a woman, you're on it. You're, you're out there fighting for it, you're doing your part. Yeah. As a man, as a man, <laughs> one thing at a time. <laughs> here's my, I don't want to be responsible. Just tell me, a woman, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Here's my, here's my favorite one thing at a time. Watch this, this is recently when I found out, I was like, man, this guy's so badass. <laughs> Regents are looking the other way while UW Madison lies to the public about abusing cats and squandering taxpayers' money on cruel and wasteful experiments. This is not science. This is torture. And it is criminal. Shame on you, UW Shame for on killing cats. That's quite a moment. That just happened. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's you know, it's it's I, I it's fun, but the suffering of those animals uh, that we uh, we don't even think about anymore. We don't seem to care about other living things. It's just the size of your heart that you're willing to get arrested for cats when cats don't even like us. That's a great sign. <laughs> that's uh, uh, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously don't know. Oh, I, I had cats. cats. No, I had cats, uh, and I think we just go. But I like your position on pets because I have the same way. I don't think you can own an animal. I think no. you can coexist with an animal. I didn't even name when I had, you know, animals before. I didn't want to name them because yeah. I thought it'd be weird to attend. They don't care. They don't care at all. Yeah. What did that happen to you, the, the, the guy? I mean, I'm sure you always liked animals, but yeah. the activism part of you, is it, born, is it part of it because of what happened to your father and you watched the government stick it to your dad? Oh, no. No, I came across the country in 1975 on my motorcycle and went through the feedlots in Texas for, a, seemed like a day, with animals on either side of the road as far as you could see, in pens, with that look of terror in their eyes and the smell and the sound, and I said, oh, man, I... I can't do this. And for from 75 until 94, I sort of dealt with the ramifications of making that choice. But after Babe, after seeing those animals and their contribution to my life, I mean, I owe my career to those animals. And then you, then you see it all laid out on the table at lunch. Every animal that you've just worked with, <laughs> stuffed and pickled and um, you think, oh, that is ghastly. Stick around more with James Cromwell after this. <laughs> so good. At 76, uh, what, Peter Sellers, Maggie Smith. David Niven. Peter Falk. Yeah. Um, Alec Guinness. Truman Capote. Truman Capote. I mean, that's quite a lineup. Unbelievable. To sit at the reading, that was the real thing. I mean, it's one to, to do a screen test, and it was, uh, I, I, it was 11 weeks on a soundstage with all of them together, at all of us as a family, and it was magic, absolutely magic. Speaking of all and the family, yeah. stretch. He was fun. Yeah. That was neat. That was my first television show. I thought, damn, a television show? <laughs> I'm going to be on a television show. It was pretty damn exciting. Anyway, Archie Bunker and the guy you play is still mine. It's different, right? I mean, different, but the same. You're talking about guys who might be just slightly out of step with modern times. What about your co star? What was that like with her? Um, I've had a crush on Jean Viev since I was in college. Uh, she was, uh, I'm very fond of French Canadians to begin with. And uh, she was not only beautiful and incredibly sexy, uh, I love that feistiness. And then the nude scene, you know, she was supposed to do the shower scene with yeah. me and she reneged at the last moment. And then, so, but she watched the scene to see what I would do. And she looked at it and thought, oh, he doesn't, he's not embarrassed. And it just looks normal. So when the nude scene came where she had to drop her chemise down, she said, she did it with that sort of, there, 
No. So, you do it. <laughs> and, you know, you, you, what you do is, she's standing in front of me naked. Yeah. And you try to remember, don't drop your eyes. All right, I'm right here. I'm right well, here, James. The reason is because, of course, that draws attention because that's not the moment. And then the scene went on, and I said what needed to be said in the scene. And uh, it's a really sweet moment. And that little college boy got to hold a naked Jean Vieux. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> Still Mine is what it's called. It's such a beautiful film. May the 3rd, you can see it in Vancouver and also in Toronto. And then it opens May 10th in another major city. What a, what a great trip. Thanks, Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, John. We'll be right back. I love that.